Good afternoon, Asia. Good morning, Europe. Thank you all very much for joining, joining us for our second edition of Harting's Industrial Ethernet Week. During this week, we really want to give you ideas how to implement seamless sensor to cloud communication. In different words, how to bring IoT to life. We are really happy that you are all uh, joining from uh, like over 50 countries um, on, five, um, on all five continents here in Esbekamp in the Harting Forum. I'm overwhelmed that we have so many great partners, customers, and also internal product management resources on the agenda, and we really hope to give you a good overview about industrial communication of today, tomorrow, and beyond. Before we now start in our great agenda for the day, um, I would like to give you some organizational um, hints how we would like to create the week together with you. The chat in your go-to meeting is open, so you are able to reach us here on stage all the time, and we will, whenever this is possible, include your questions into the panel discussions and single presentations. If this is not possible uh, due to time reasons, we will bring those um, questions to the presenters and answer them afterwards um, in the session. Then you will see all the names um, of the presenters um, and, the, and the guest speakers, and they are all online on LinkedIn, and we would really like to get into an interaction uh, together with you and um, to have to have questions and um, discussions ongoing during the week. Also, in the chat window of the GoToWebinar, um, you will find a link where if you have a current project and you would like to have really uh, contact to local sales teams, to product management resources uh, during the week, but also afterwards, you are able to, to click on that link uh, which you find in the, in the GoToWebinar uh, chat box um, to get in touch with us. We will provide then um, the needed contact information. So now um, I would really like to start um, into, the, into the agenda um, of the day. Um, and we will start today um, with digitalization of global machine parks. Then we will go into the needed connectivity, how connectivity solutions are enabling industrial communication of today and tomorrow. Then we will hear, uh, uh, um, we, then we will hear how the industrial metaverse, so I learned a lot about this already uh, during dinner last, uh, last, um, last night, and this is going to be followed by um, an introduction of some IoT use cases which are happening already today in the market and uh, this will be really inspirational and we will end up the day then um, with a common, pan common panel discussion where we will fit all those uh, different levels and layers of the industrial communication pyramid together here. And now I'm happy to introduce Matthias Hafner. Uh, welcome on, on stage, Matthias. So Matthias and I met the first time on a Nova Fair um, uh, um, last year. So that was a physical event. And now I'm happy to have you here in Espelkamp. Matthias is, um, Matthias is a head of digital solutions at, um, no, you are, you are head of customer experience, right? Customer success. Ca yeah. Customer success at Scheffler Digital um, Solution. Solutions at GmbH. So, stage is yours, Matthias. Thank you very much. Thank Looking you very forward much, to your Kian. input. Thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure today to give you a speech on um, the digitalization of global machine parks, especially focusing on potentials and requirements. After a short introduction, I will go first to the challenge when we look into our customers when we want to digitalize global machine parks. Then I will show you some use cases which um, make sense in this round from very easy data acquisition to real process monitoring. Then I will go furthermore on the requirements. So what does it need to have a successful transformation? And we'll give you afterwards a short summary with the main points. As you have heard already, my name is Matthias Hafner. I'm working since 2012 for Scheffler in different roles and also management positions. 
Since 2016, I'm focusing on digitalization, especially in the area of operations. And since three years now, I'm working in Chemnitz with our Schefter daughter company, Schaeffler Digital Solutions, as head of customer success, managing our sales and service team um, to digitalize digital factories across the world. So, Scheffler Digital Solutions itself, former called Autinity, is a 100% daughter company of Scheffler. We have the focus to connect machines, so we have a lot of internal customers, so more than 75 plants, which are our customers, but also a lot of external customers, which we serve with our products on a day-to-day -day basis to optimize the processes. In total, we have connected more than 12,500 machines, which makes us quite successful in the market of connectivity as well as IoT solutions on top. So everything with digitalization starts with a vision. So today I brought you our Scheffler Vision Production 2030. So our production in 2030 will look like this picture. So we have different cells you can flexible move within our production facilities as we have also lower, um, lower quantities sometimes to get um, also to, to serious production. Furthermore, um, these machines are connected. We have a lot of more robots who work collaborative with our humans within the factory. We use new technologies like AR, VR, as well as also artificial intelligence and of course, the factory is not only digital, it's also sustainable. So that's what we see all in our vision of the future. But when we look into our factories today, but not only in our factories of Scheffler, also when we visit our external customers, we see a different picture. To get to this vision is a long way and a lot of work. So when we look into the production, we see currently a heterogeneous brownfield. So we ourselves have more than 25,000 machines within 75 plants. We have a high depth of value-added processes with more than 200 different machine classes from very big heat treatment machines to, form, uh, to, to take our metal, harden our metal, to really the finishing process of grinding and honing. But not only this makes it difficult, when we look into our machine parks, also a totally different age structure we have. So we have products within Scheffler producing bearings and systems on machines which are sometimes also 30 years old. With a good maintenance, that's totally no problem. We produce a very high quality with these machines and these processes are optimized, of course. But still, you would like to have the data to get the last 5% also improvement in your factory. Furthermore, we have all kinds of PLCs, sensors and devices equipped because if you have machines within the last 30 years, 25,000 of them, of course there's not one single machine um, builder where we have only one single machine which is pretty easy then to connect. So we have a variety of PLCs, sensors and devices attached in our factory, which we need to handle. So just as the status as it is, but when we ask our users, when it comes to digitalization, what do you want? We have within the plant different teams who are really knowing what they would like to have. So here just an overview. So when you ask the shop floor colleagues, they say, I want to have the data for my OEE to analyze and get the data for my MES. Furthermore, we have our maintenance teams who are driving digitalization since long years within Scheffler to get the data for a predictive maintenance system. So how does that go? Of course, it's their wish and they want to connect more machines to um, optimize their maintenance processes. Furthermore, sustainability a very big topic in our days. So here we need also data from all the consumables which, where we need to have the consumptions of all the resources across the value chain. Data scientists 
want to have data for the algorithms, for the artificial intelligence. So this needs to be high frequency data, same as the production technologists who would like to optimize the processes in real time to get even more output and improve the technology. So if you see this, they all know what they would like to have. But when we look 2018 into our electrical cabinet, and that's what I brought you here, just a picture from the times when we started intensively to digitalize our factories. This is a picture from us in 2018. But if I open at some customers, the electrical cabinets, I still find these pictures. So here you see an electrical cabinet with four different connectivity devices in just one cabinet for one single machine. How can that be? So every department is interested on the page before to receive savings within the plant. Every department has for their purpose their own business case and a decision and also the possibility to move on with their projects. But often, this is just a one-to-one -one connection from the machine to the integrated system, what they use on enterprise level. So these devices are on our side, one device um, for our MES system, one device for condition monitoring system, and even two devices for process monitoring and real-time process control. So these are all things which we still see today, but that makes it very difficult because you have four times overhead to implement these systems. You have four times energy costs. You have four times overhead in administration, and especially OT security is becoming a very big um, topic in these days. So we need to make sure that all these four devices are also having the right security in place for, for future setup. So before we go into the requirements, I would like to show you some potentials what we already see. Just three I brought today. Of course, we have a lot more established. Um, when we look from the left to the right, we see on the left side the signals and on the right side going more to the right, the value. So with our products, you see them also on the top, named with Autinity. We start on the left side with Autinity DAP, our data acquisition platform. Here we have the possibility to acquire data and transfer them to different systems, like, for example, the machine execution system, like MES. Here, often the basic information required is the part counter and the machine state. Pretty easy. You need this on a minute or second um, frequency. And this is just to get, in the end, a transparency with a few data points per machine. But a very big driver for connectivity, because MES is usually the, to the, the, um, the system what needs to be installed to get really an overview about your produced parts. When you go further and say, I would like to have more savings, you can look into um, use cases, what we drive in our industrial um, four platform, here focusing on sustainability and leakage detection. So beside machine data, we have also additional sensors um, at, at attached to the different pipelines of um, compressed air. So we measure here the flow, the pressure, the temperature, and the energy. And this in second levels. So what we can detect here is, of course, if you have a machine um, required um, compressed air, you can detect a leakage in the hose. Immediately, if there's abnormality, you see this um, line going um, to the bottom, and then the energy consumption is increasing. If something like this happens, you need to react fast, especially with the energy prices we have since a couple of, um, couple of months now, that the, the energy price is increasing, and of course, failures like this costing in total, if you sum up this across different machines, costs a lot of money, 
um, during the whole year because you waste a lot of energy because the compressed air is not going to the machine because the pipeline is not, um, not stable. So therefore, you will just consume a lot of energy, but the compressed air will go completely away from your hose. And if you look even more further and say, I would like to have more savings, then you can really work with process control. So we have here a real-time monitoring software where we see also very high value coming out. We having vibration sensors together with PLC work steps. We stream this data directly from the sensors. We calculate with mathematical formulas and also reference values we created based on 100 produced parts, if a part is okay or not okay. And we can really detect after the next parts which are coming that is a part okay or not okay. We can also give the feedback to the PLC that the part will sort out immediately within the process. As you know, every working step you need to add value to your product. But if you identify a product will be not good, it's important to directly sort them out of the process to not invest more capacity into this product. So this is what we really detect here and identify that we have the right um, quality in the end in our product and that we can also trace it over time if, if there will be also some um, issues happening in the future. Here we work really in milliseconds. So here, just to give you a reference, um, we stream 100,000 samples per second. So this is really high frequency data and this requires also a lot of resource power close to the machine. Because we often have this topic, so what makes the most sense in terms of dimension for industrial IoT? This depends in the end really on the use case. So if you start really on the left side and just would you like to have some basic data for your MES system, it's of course more easy than you would like to have the real process control and give feedback to a process control. But what we figured out in the sum that not every of these products need just one connect, uh, needs a single connectivity. In the end, it makes sense to take all of them on one connectivity. And this is what I would like to show you here as example of our own house of Scheffler. So we have right now connected in-house more than 5,000 machines with our technologies. And we see the number of connected machines, deployed use cases, and also the data flow is increasing rapidly. So you see here our beginning in 2014. In 2017, Scheffler Digital Solutions was acquired. And now you see here really this curve is going very fast upwards and this is accelerating because we have an easy to use digital ecosystem for everyone. So this means we make it easy for our plans to work with the technology to consume the data and use it for their purpose. Furthermore, we have a strong know-how increase through that within our plans. Just yesterday, I had a call with an Indian colleague. So they just started and he has a lot of ideas what he can already do with our technology to improve his local problems based on data. So therewith, we generated a pull effect so that the connectivity is not pushed from a central department so that really the plants are having a lot of ideas. They know how to adapt the technology and they are contacting us and want to pull and connect more machines to work even more intensively with the data. They create new use cases, applications and idea on a weekly basis. And of course, it's a high motivated team what we experience who share between all the plants best practices. So it's not that the central department now is only pushing and saying, look at these use cases. In the end, it's also the plants who share the use cases which works best with also an identification of the business case to other plants. And of course, for us important, we directly get also product feedback and also develop our products more and more into the direction for user-specific needs. But that's work. Of course, you saw the numbers increasing 
And the pull effect is not just coming from one single push forward. So what I brought you here, some requirements also on the following pages. So how we managed our transformation and are still managing our transformation within the operations environment. So three main pillars, strategy and budget, organization and transformation, as well as technology are important to move these things forward. So we started roughly in 2018 where we had the first use cases implemented. You saw the picture of the electrical cabinets and we said if we want to move this forward, we see here we need to have a clear strategy, a target, and we need also budget to really enable our plans to make the first step. Therewith, we made a proposal for our board members. We analyzed all machines we have in our park of these 25,000 machines which of these machines makes sense to connect. In the end, it's machines of, of a purchase, repurchase value of more than 50,000K. So that's important for us because the machines who have not a high um, repurchase value sometimes make no sense. In the end, the plant need to decide what kinds of machine they would like to connect. But we needed to have also a figure for our board members to say, if you would like to fund this, what is the amount of money you would need? And in the end, we came up with a strategy across the world where we said we have 7,500 machines. You see also the coloring here um, based on the machines we have distributed across the world. And we say this 7,500 machines will be connected within the next three years. So here you see already on the, on the pages before that we, we reach already the 5,000. And the next two and a half will be even faster because we created this ecosystem within Scheffler. This all needs to be steered across all the plans. And that's, with 75 plans, not an easy task. So what we set up is an organization where we have one colleague in the headquarter who is, in the end, the project manager for the so-called connectivity push. And then we have two divisions, industrial and automotive, where we have coordinators who are distributing, in the end, the budget to their plans based on the future um, production footprint and also the future products, what they are going to have, um, so that it makes sense that we really invest in the right technologies and also into the future-oriented products. Then we have regional hubs. So they are enabled with all the technology and they are so-called the front runners because they are very close to the plants who then adapt technologies, who consult also the local teams um, and support them for connectivity. And then we have the plants who are in the end um, implementing the hardware. They are having the, the issues locally and they would like to work with the data and improve. And of course, on the bottom, you see Scheffler Digital Solutions. That's myself and, and our whole team. So we are supporting this whole connectivity push with our technology and hardware to deliver this in the end out to the plant and work in a collaborative matrix together with the plants, but also with the central coordinator to make sure everything is running into the direction where we want to have it and we want to steer it. But even beside a clear strategy, the budget, and also the organization, you need to have technology. And the technology decision is not easy. We know this by ourselves. You saw the picture before. So what we established and built the technology is what we call our data acquisition platform, Autinity DAP. This makes it very simple for our plans to in, uh, install an industrial PC next to the machine or several machines to one IPC. Then we distribute the data from this IPC to a message bus. So we use here, for example, the NUTS technology, could be also others, or we send them um, this data directly into the system how our customers would like to have it. But that's basically the standard on a very high-level architecture how we make it easy for our plans to get machines connected and work with the data. 
they have an instruction, they know how to install the, um, the IPCs, and with this one IPC, you can really then have, in the end, the technology running and fulfill your use cases. Now we go a little bit deeper how this technology works. So here I brought you a picture of the reference architecture industry 4.0. So this is um, developed by Fraunhofer and a lot of different um, industry um, leaders a couple years ago. So you see here from the field level on the bottom, the control devices, the workstations, and also the enterprise level. So we built the whole bridge with our Autinity logger on the search stage to connect to different PLCs, Siemens, Beckhoff, Fanuc, Heidenheim, Ellen Bradley. So the broad variety, what we have within our plans, we are able to connect, to have more than 50 connectors out of the box to connect the physical PLC to our Autinity logger where our software is running and distribute the data to higher level systems. This can be our message broker, this can be a certain system like MES, but this can also be cloud infrastructures out of our customers. But the best is not only the PLCs. So in the end, you have also certain use cases where you would like to have further sensors equipped, like what I mentioned, the, the compressed air leakage detection. So here you need certain sensors, which you see on the bottom. Sometimes the machines are having already sensors. Sometimes you need to retrofit sensors. And with our technology, you are able to connect sensors to, um, to evaluation units and from evaluation units also immediately to our logger. So that makes it easy for our plans to directly consume and focus on the use case rather than to program anything locally onto the PLC so that you can get the data out. So it's very flexible from the usage. Of course, beside the um, PLCs and sensors, we op also support OPC UA, Profinet, Modbus, and IO-Link. So the main protocols, what we see in our factories and also from our customers, we usually support out of the box. And if not, we have the capabilities also to develop new, um, new connectors for our customers. So, but when we even go further, how does this work from a technology point of view? Um, so we have here three different components. The first one, DAP, that's our edge device where we have our runtime, where we also perform in the end the computing power for certain use cases. This is some um, uh, homepage where you can log in directly to a physical logger. You see all the information you would like to have the whole RAM, um, the, the hard disk. You see also the performance of the logger and all services, what is currently implemented on this logger and deployed. Then we have in the middle our Ranger server. This is more for IT or operations IT um, departments. Here we have a digital twin of the left side of the edge devices so that you can easily identify what is the current status of the, of the Autinity logger and that you can easily deploy certain use cases or applications onto this physical logger and also administrate this completely and push also updates to it. That's all running on a Kubernetes cluster, optimized especially for our um, for our products so that you can run certain use cases on just one device. And then we have for the user our central tech library, and that's one of the most important parts. What we see also at customer, if you have only one or two machines, um, this might be, of course, not, um, not the main part, but if you have several thousand machines, you need also to make sure that this data can be used easily across plans. So if a new machine is coming online, which somebody has already um, connected, it makes sense to directly show what kind of variables you would like to have, what kind of metadata is already available from this machine. Also, when you have certain use cases that you know that a part counter is a part counter. So you need to identify text and share use cases. This is the main interface for our users so that they can easily type in what kind of data they would like to have from the different devices and get them also then easily connected and working with our technology. So that's just a short summary of our technology, our total 
um, journey of how we digitalize our factories. Just to sum up, so when you would like to have a similar approach like us, connectivity in machine parks will be done only once. So you will not start a connectivity push with not the right technology because this task will be done for older machines only once. Your machines, there will be then clear standards developed, but as you saw, seven and a half thousand machines was our target um, further to come. But here we know that we will connectivity only once and this with the right technology so that you are future oriented setup and that you can easily via software get further use cases enabled on a certain edge device. What we also experienced that the value is coming from several use cases in combination on one machine. This is a very important part. You saw in the beginning the picture where we had several devices, which cost all a lot of overhead costs. We see really the value if you have more and more use cases established. In the end, the payoff is just from one use case, and then you can easily deploy further use cases, which makes a total use case and total savings much more effective. Important also, challenges and ideas are in the plant. This is also the place where the transformation in the end needs to happen. If you talk to the users, they already know what they would like to have. But you need to deliver them the three components I pointed out to support them on their journey. They need the budget, they need support, they need the right technology that they just can use and implement and get also their needs done. Of course, not only work too long on strategy is important, but also start with lighthouse projects. So you need to show value concretely to the shop floor guys. You need to get them behind you to really push them in the first step, but then get a pull effect from the plants. Additionally, strategy governance budget, of course, is required, as you saw on our side, to kickstart in enterprises, but also to steer a clear transformation and get them all coordinated in the right direction. Create a pull effect and easy to use digital landscape. Don't make it too complicated. In the end, of course, it's a lot of technology, a lot of partner network, but you need to make it easy for your users in the plants in China, in India, in Americas, who are not directly located to the headquarter and working since five years with this technology. And of course, partnering is necessary. We are here not because just Scheffler has an interesting story, because you need partners, where we discuss also later in our, um, in our panel discussion, how do good partnerships work. You need physical layers um, more on the brownfield. You need on top also the cloud infrastructures, and you need to identify, especially for your transformation, where do you have maybe some more challenges where you have not enough resources, capacity, and also knowledge where you might need partners from externally who support you in this journey because one is clear, there is possible not enough resources to get everything at the same time. Either you need more resources, you need more technology, you need certain budget, but you need in the end to make sure that you have the right partner network to get your transformation done. And that's the end of my presentation. If you would like to digitalize your factory and you are interested to get into more exchange, please do not hesitate to contact me. My LinkedIn contacts, but also my phone numbers. We are also supporting a lot of external customers with our technology, and I'm happy to support also you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Matthias. And you Thanks. can just skip because I brought one question. You more or less answered it. It's an easy one, I guess, but I think a very important one. The question was, you are digitalizing all factories, right? You are not only digitalizing uh, the Scheffler factories, right? Correct. Yes. So we, we start with, so we are 100% daughter company of Scheffler, but as we are own legal entity, we are also serving a lot of uh, reputational external customers who are using our software on a day-to-day -day basis across the world. So we have the clear network and also the technology is ready also to use for external customers. Perfect. So thank you then that we can lift the partnership here on stage this week.
Take care. And uh, that was Matthias.